Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at an actual CPA simulation that's covered on the exam. And this simulation is actual because it's released by the AI CPA. The AI CPA is the organization that administered the CPA exam. So this is the real deal. So I'm going to show you how to approach each simulation on the exam day. And this way you will not be intimidated by those questions. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses, including hundreds of CPA questions. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, note, multiple choice, true, false, and if you're studying for your CPA exam, 2,000 plus CPA questions. Let's go ahead and take a look at this simulation. The first thing you want to do is you want to read the simulation and notice here there's no exhibits which is good but you have to read the simulation very carefully. Everything is given within the within the simulation. Now I'm going to tell you I'm going to read this simulation for you first and I'm going to tell you how it can be given to you in another format. So this way you should not be intimidated and this simulation is basically an exercise in an intermediate accounting textbook. So in my intermediate accounting, I will give exercises similar to this one. And that's why when I say if you review if you review your college exercises, you are technically studying for your CPA simulation because all that the simulation is is an exercise or a problem from the end of each chapter. So let's take a look at it. On January 1st, year one, Lex Company purchase equipment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and uh, grab this so I can highlight. Can highlight as I'm going through it. On January 1st, year one, Lex company purchased equipment for 90,000. In addition to the purchase price, Lex paid 6,000 in sales tax, 1,600 in shipping cost, 3,000 in personnel training cost, 2,400 in installation cost. The equipment has an estimated salvage value of 10,000 total estimated useful life of 10 years. Now, without even reading any further, you should be heading into, they might be asking me about depreciation. Why? Because when they're giving you information like this, you should be heading into depreciation. So breathe, you should know your depreciation. So let's keep going. Lex uses the straight line method of depreciation and record depreciation expense annually. As I expected, it's about depreciation. Okay. Now, the same information, this same information here, which is the cost and the additional expenditure, it can be given to you in a form of exhibits. So rather than telling you they purchased the equipment for 90,000, they might give you a purchase invoice. Rather than telling you the shipping cost is 1,600, they might give you a shipping invoice. It does not matter. You just have to kind of calm down, relax, and know what you are being asked. But that's all what you are giving here. But all this information, I could give you the same information in three different exhibits and intimidate you on the exam day, or I can give you this in a narrative, which is you are very familiar with it. So when you see those exhibits, don't get, don't panic, don't panic, because all what it is, it's additional information. On January 1st, year two, on January 1st year two, the estimated life was revised to a total of five years. So notice the life here was 10. Okay, then, the, then they revised the life to five from the date of the purchase. And the estimated salvage value was reduced to 5,000. It used to be 10,000. They reduced the salvage to five. Okay, this is additional, additional information. It was the result of the increase in the production. That's fine. Whatever it is, we'll, we would live with that. The equipment was sold for 55000 So we sold the equipment on July 1st, year 3. For the situation below, record the appropriate journal entry. So here's what we are told. Click on the cell in the account name column and select the appropriate account. An account may be used once or not at all for all journal entries. Enter the corresponding debit or credit amount at the associated column. All amount will automatically be rounded to the nearest dollar. Not all rows in the table might be needed to complete each journal entry. If no journal entry is needed, check no journal entry required. So the first question is prepare the journal entry for depreciation. Pretty straightforward for year two. Not very straightforward. So here what they want is the depreciation expense in for year two. Now immediately what you would do on the exam day, you will select depreciation expense debit, credit accumulated depreciation. Whether you have time to compute the numbers or not, you immediately compute 
the depreciation expense. To compute depreciation, you have to know the cost of the asset, you have to know the life, and you have to know the salvage value. Okay, let's find what these three items are. The cost of the asset. Well, we purchased the asset for 90000 Is that part of the cost? Yes. We paid sales tax of 6000 Is that part of the cost? Yes. Sales tax is part of the cost of the asset. We paid 1600 for shipping. Is that part of the cost? Yes, it is. We paid 3000 in personnel training cost. Is that included? Well, we are not told anything about the training cost. Are they related to the asset or not related? We're not told anything, therefore we cannot assume it's part of the asset. 2,400 in installation cost. Well, installation cost of the asset, that's part of the cost. The estimated, the equipment has an estimated salvage value of 10,000. So now we can determine the cost, okay? So what, what was the cost? The cost is the purchase price plus 6,000 in sales tax plus 1600 in shipping cost plus 2400 in um, installation the total cost is a hundred thousand the salvage value is 10 the life is uh, the salvage value is 10,000 which is giving which is right here and the life is 10 so but they're asking us for year two let's compute year one because in year two we made an adjustment so year one we have a cost minus salvage divided by life of 10 so 90,000 divided by 10 equal to 9,000 so year one depreciation expense expense 9,000 accumulated depreciation 9,000 but that's not what we are being asked we're being asked for year two now why year two is important why is this problem a little bit more challenging because if they're asking you for year one year one is pretty straightforward and make sure don't fall for year one because they're asking for year two but at least debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. So what happened in year two? Here's the information that we are told in year two. Now this same information could be given to you in an email. So I can, you know, I can email, uh, the manager can email the accountant telling them this is what happened to the asset. The asset, uh, we revised the life of the asset, the five and change its salvage value. So rather than this narr narrated thing, narrated paragraph here you know they could give it to you in the form of an exhibit as an email communication between two individuals well it's not a big deal all what happened is the life changed so the life of the asset went down to five let me change the colors here so this way you know I'm, I'm dealing with a new asset the life went down to five years the salvage van went down to five thousand this is what happened now I need to recompute depreciation again so when I have a revision and depreciation, revision and estimate, what's going to happen is this. The original cost was 100000 I'm going to deduct 9000 for year one depreciation. Therefore, I have a new asset with a book value of 91000 Now, this asset, this $91,000 asset, will have a new salvage value of 5 and a new life of five, a new salvage value of 5000 and a new life of 5. So 91 minus 5 divided by I'm sorry the remaining life is four because it's five as of the beginning of the year so we have to be careful here here what we are told total of five years from the date of the purchase one year went by total four so the estimated not the estimated the expense for year two is twenty one thousand five hundred and that's it I answered the first question and all what it took is knowing how to compute depreciation so I need to do what I need to do what debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation and this is what you should do before you even compute the number so you're going to get a credit for those two and the answer is 21,500 for year one I'm sorry for year two debit and 21,500 credit accumulated depreciation for year two I'm done with the first question notice they gave you more uh, more journal entries to make but that's it all what they're asking you is the depreciation expense for year two the second entry is prepare the journal entry to record year three sale and any necessary adjustments. So what they want you to do here is to prepare the journal entry for year three sale. What are we told? We are told that the equipment was sold July 1st, year three. Now, the first thing you need to know about depreciation, I'm sorry, about the sale of equipment is the depreciation has to be up to date. So the first thing I have to do, I have to book the depreciation as of July 1st. What does that mean? It means I have to book the depreciation for January, February, March, April, May, June, 
for six months for six months let's go back and take a look at the depreciation to see how I'm how am I gonna do how I'm am I gonna book the depreciation and why booking the depreciation is important why do I have to do that first why is that's important the first thing I have to do is make sure my depreciation is up to date the total depreciation per year is 21,500 times 612 because I'm only need to book the depreciation for six months and that's gonna give me that's gonna give me 10,750 so that's my depreciation for year one that's my depreciation I'm sorry half of year one that's my depreciation as of July 1st that's my depreciation now th the second thing I have to know is what's my book value what's the book value of the asset why do I need to know the book value because when I sell an asset I have to determine whether I have a gain or a loss or a loss so they determine the gain or the loss I'm gonna compare the cash that I received which is 55,000 versus the book value now how do you compute the book value well the book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation the cost of this asset is a hundred thousand we took nine thousand of depreciation in year one nine thousand in year one we took 21,500 in year two minus 21,500 in year two minus 10,750 year three 10,750 year three so the book value of this asset the book value of this asset let's compute the book value because we need to do so let's find the book value so we're gonna take 100,000 minus 9,000 minus 21,500 minus 10,750 58,750 so the book value is 58,750 the book value is 58,750 I sold it for less it means I have a loss of the difference 3,750 that's my loss so I have a loss of 3750 so I so I know my depreciation how much I need to book depreciation I know my loss let's see if I can book uh, uh, book this entry so let's go ahead and look at this so the first is I have to book depreciation expense for half a year and that was 10750 that's the first thing you have to know then you have to debit your loss I already told you my loss is loss on disposal we already find out the loss is 3000 750 I have to remove my accumulated depreciation well my accumulated depreciation for year one was 9,000 for year two was 20,500 so my total accumulated depreciation is 30,500 that's my total accumulated depreciation I have to remove that I also received I, I received cash so I have to debit cash I mean make sure to start with cash because it's easy you receive cash of 55,000 then you have to dispose of the asset you have to get rid of the equipment you have to credit equipment credit equipment 100,000 now before you proceed because make sure your entries balance so make sure you pull pull your calculator here because this way you can check yourself pull your calculator and add up all your debits 10,750 plus 3,750 plus 30,500 plus 55,000 this is gonna add up to my 100,000 credit this looks good 100,000 so notice as I told you earlier it looks this problem does not look as intimidating if you are familiar with property plant and equipment so you need to know how to put basically what they're asking you here is do you know you do you know how to book depreciation after the revise of the asset after we revise the life and the salvage value of the asset it's something you learn in accounting 101 then they ask you to dispose of the asset and it was at a loss also that's taught in accounting 101 as well as in intermediate accounting however this information could be given to you in a very intimidated manner for example rather than tell you, telling you it was sold for 55 I can give you a, a sales invoice for 55,000 make it look very complicated but all what you're looking for is how much was it sold for which is 55,000 so so if you want to be comfortable if you want to be comfortable with those CPA simulations go to my website and learn about property plant and equipment and intermediate accounting You're, you study for your CPA once in your lifetime 
make make sure you invest widely use all your resources my website my youtube i'm here to help you good luck and study hard